What have you tried to highlight about him the most through the movie? It's Sam Dam Dandabhed, which I have used to get this movie to be releasing now. One should do whatever it takes one, once one has decided. And also that Dushman ko kiye huye vade nibhai nahi jate. True. What can people learn from him? His stay at Kalapad. I went there for the recce. Yes. Mm. We had written, we, we had written the whole sequences in Kalapad. Yeah. No sanitation, no air. Yeah. You can't see anybody because all the cells face the same way. Yeah. I was screaming at them to come and get me out. They couldn't hear me. Those few moments of that flutter that I felt of what a soul must have gone through is what I then put as my bottom line to mm. execute my, the Kalapani portions. Hi, welcome. <laughs> I'm Hi. Astha. I'm the editor of Sunday Midday and we're talking to Randeep Huda. Randeep, would you start by telling me what was your first introduction to Savarkar? I think uh, Kalapani and Savarkar somewhere became synonymous hmm. for me as a child. Yeah. But uh, when this movie came to me as an actor, I thought I knew a lot about history. But when I thought about it, I said, I didn't know, don't know much about Mr. Savarkar at all. Yeah. So then when I did a deeper research and started reading various books on it, then I realized, my God, there's so much that nobody knows and, yeah. and it's been brushed under the carpet. Yeah. And um, that, uh, in spite of my well-wishers telling me that you're just an artist, why are you getting into this, you'll become political and this and that, I said, whatever it takes. Because uh, his story needs to be told. Yeah. And um, the kind of name calling that happens in his name is absolutely unjustified. And, and to correct that wrong, so to speak, I then got after it with all my, my, my sincerity. And then I came, then slowly uh, I ended up co writing the film with Utkarsh mm. Naitani. Mm. And then so the circumstances rolled that I was given the baton of the director as well. Mm. And then I had, uh, you know, taken it upon myself that yeah. I will see this to its end and bring it to people. It's taken me two years of doing nothing else but Savarkar. And um, I put everything on my li on, 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 online for it, whether it's emotionally, financially, physically. Yeah. I've committed to it and uh, I think that's the way I have always wanted to work. Yeah. And finally... I, I'm, I'm very glad and grateful that this is seeing the light of the day and people are going to be privy to his special story. Yeah, but tell me a little bit about this research that you did for two years. What what all did have you done? Where I, all have you been? I, I have, didn't go anywhere. Um, but I uh, read books in English, some books in Hindi. Then I spoke to a lot of my Maharashtran friends who have mm. written, uh, who have yeah. read his stories yeah. and his own extensive. So I read about him and I read him. Yeah. Which was the most interesting yeah, part yeah, because I'm he sure. was a writer and such yeah, a prolific yeah. writer and his sentences are so long and so complicated. You have to go back and read yeah, yeah. it. Was a, it was a great effort. But then his, uh, his epochs of life, his transportation for, uh, epochs for a Hindu life and mm. his transportation to life, Hindutva mm. and uh, many such books and uh, he's composed some, he composed 6,000 poems while he was in Kalapani in 7 by 11 cell and he memorized them and then wrote them when he got out of there. Wow. So there was so much to, to material on him and I'm, I'm wondering why is it not a part of public discourse? People just have heard things yeah. like they say WhatsApp University and they just keep parroting the same thing. Mafi veer, mafi veer. He was not a mafi veer. Yeah. Saam dam danda bhed. If you're 26 and you're sent to a two lifetimes, which yeah. is 50 years. Yeah. The date of his, his, his release was 1960. Yeah. Oh my God. 1960 was yeah. supposed to be released. Yeah. And he was a lawyer himself. Yeah. And in the process of law, in the judicial process, one is allowed to make bail pleas. Yeah. Appeals to appealing your, your case. Yeah. And he was a lawyer himself. So he wrote these bail pleas to the British, but he was a very flowery, and you know very romantic writer at that time and actually it was Gandhiji who finally said just make it short <laughs> to his brother Dr. Narayan Rao who was coincidentally lynched 
after Gan Gandhiji's murder yeah. on Girgaon Chopati. Yeah. 8,000 Brahmins were lynched in Maharashtra. Yeah. Yeah. So much for non-violence. Yeah. Right? So then Gandhiji only advised Dr. Narayan Rao Savarkar that, hey, keep it short, stay, stick to the facts. And that's how you, uh, you because Mr. Gandhi was also a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Right? So that was his final petition and that's how he got out. So people don't know about this. But it's strange that you're saying you bring up Gandhi, who he had a very difficult relationship or, or a relationship. I mean, now you're saying this, that means that Gandhi they helped had, him a lot as well. Uh, they Love had and hate. opposing ideology yeah. and both were very stubborn about it. Mm. Both yeah. were very stubborn about it. They met three times. Mm. One was in 19, around 1906, 1907 in India House yeah. in London. The second one was at a restaurant on mm. Vijay Dashmi. There mm. was, both of them gave speeches. Yeah. And um, coincidentally, Savarkar Saab spoke a lot about religious unity mm. in, that, in that speech. And then uh, in 1927, Gandhiji had visited him on one of his his uh, things in Ratnagiri mm. when he was under house arrest. So these three times they met and in fact they both are were very opposite in their, uh, in their ideology. Yeah. But in the end they both wanted the same thing, Akhanda Bharat. Yeah. Gandhiji also said, over my dead body. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they both want, they started opposite and then they, they came into the center uh, to meet in the center for, for the one purpose which was a united India no unpartitioned India and both of them uh, uh, were not in the government when it was finally formed yeah. after independence. Yeah. So it often happens, it happens in the Cuban revolution. Yeah. Che Guerra was not the prime minister yeah. or any uh, revolution all across the world it happens that the revolutionaries fight the revolution and the politicians take over from there on. Sure. <coughs> and yeah. that was the true in the case in India yeah. as well. Yeah. But do you think Savarkar's was less about religion and more about nation? Yeah. Yes, Savarkar's was, in fact, in, till 1920, it was, everybody was one. Mm. But in 1920, there was a caliphate movement that yeah. happened in India from yeah. Rai Bareilly yeah. to Ali Brothers, they were called. From Rai Bareilly. They ironically. Ironically. Rai Bareilly. <laughs> and, yeah. and no Muslim country in the world protested against the caliph who was the caliph of Ottoman Empire, Turkey, mm. whose powers were reduced. Yeah. No Muslim country spoke up except for India. Mm. And that is when the caliphate movement was started for non-cooperation. Mm. And, uh, and then at that time, the, a lot of these Muslim leaders, especially these guys, they felt that, hey, India was a sultanate when the yeah. British had come and when they leave it, should, they should leave a sultanate uh, yeah, because yeah. they did not want to join the Congress's democratic process yeah. because they were a minority. Yeah. So to get them involved in the Congress or in the freedom struggle to an extent to get a democracy, Gandhiji then became the president of the Khilafat movement and thereon started the whole process of appeasing them to stay in which the Congress has continued. Yes, continued. <laughs> and uh, which was, they were given separate electorates, they mm. were given uh, more number of seats according to their percentage. And this is where, what had actually irked Mr. Savaka. And he came up with his Hindutva, the book which is basically mm. that from the Indus River to the sea, we are all one people. Who is a Hindu? That's what, yeah. No matter what religion, mm or what caste, or what community you be belong to. Yeah. As long as you love Hind, you're, you're a Hindu. Hindu. Yeah. That irks a lot of people, but yeah. that is a geographical, geopolitical, geographical um, definition he gave. And then people didn't get that. Yeah. So then he had to describe who is a Hindu. Yeah. So he said, anybody who calls this Bharat in between the river and the, and the sea, uh, their... their um, ancestors Home. land mm, mm. and it's the, it's the land of their ancestors and the land of their cultural thing which, which is uh, you know uh, motherland yeah. so to speak yeah. where the languages, food, uh, clothes, uh, festivals are shared and then because of the Khilafat movement and there was a, there was a threat of a pan-Islamic invasion from the northwest frontier province yeah. where 
maximum amount of people in the British Army were Muslims. Yeah. So Savarkar ji, after his experience he had with the Muslim, the Pathan warders yeah. in Kalapani yeah. and conversions and all that, he was really affected by that. So he put in the last clause which irks everybody, which is that this will be the land of your faith as well. As long as you keep the country above your faith, about your religion, you're a Hindu, no matter what religion you are. Yeah. And that is was his definition. It was an all-encompassing, all-uniting yeah. uh, definition of a political ideology for freedom. Yeah. But here we are today. Yeah, but I mean, if you come to all the things that are said about him, you've also said this is a retelling. This is also an anti-propaganda movie. As yeah, have all said. this propaganda going on yeah. in his name. Come yeah, on, man, stop it. Do, go do some reading. Huh? Things like that. Yeah. Are you saying this is this is also a movie that's defending him? Well, I have put because it out. Because he's not around to do it himself as anyway. Well, I hope it does. Yeah. But that's not the purpose of the movie. Mm. The purpose of the movie, A, is to enthrall people. I've made it like a thriller. Yeah. Right, is to involve people. I've made it for young people. I've, I've treated it like a young modern film. Yeah. It's not going to you know, give you preaching, <laughs> all the preachings of yeah, Savarkar. Yeah, no, it's yeah. telling of his life. And I have put forth facts. In fact, I don't call Savarkar Veer in the movie. Hmm. It's for you to decide. It's yeah. for the audience to decide, to go out and see, see the whole movie, assess it for yourself and decide for yourself whether he was Veer or not. Yeah. So in that sense, it's not a defense. Yeah. But how is it? Playing him and getting into his shoes oh. and also directing yourself, <laughs> playing him. Oh God, I, I I had a tough time with the whole directing, acting, and yeah. because I I was almost sixty kilos, yeah, and uh, shaved my head and all yeah, those things yeah. I did. Yeah, it was very tough, but because I had been involved in the writing process, yeah. And usually, even in other movies, I know the script inside out, sometimes more than the director, yeah. because I read it, read it, read it, read it. And then, w when it came to it, in fact, a lot of times I used to forget taking my own shots. I go, <laughs> okay, everything's done now, let's move on. Because yeah. you're always pressed yeah. for time. What you like? They say, hey, we've not taken VDS, Vinayak Damodar Savarkar's yeah. shot. I said, oh, damn. I said, okay, makeup. And then I'll be instructing people while getting makeup done yeah, and all yeah. that. So, but playing him was... Um, one, any role you do, you have to discover within yourself the similarities and the differences. And um, uh, that's how I went about it. And um, I had to do it with a lot of responsibility. Yeah. And that kind of sword kept hanging on my neck all the time. That, hey, am I being frivolous? Am I, have I said something which is, uh, which is going to be misconstrued and not tell the feeling? And But how much can you encapsulate in a movie? Yeah you know, a whole person's whole life. So I had to take dramatizing, dramatized uh, uh, liberties. Yeah. But all the main events in the movie are as they are. And there are, and uh, in fact, uh, I sometimes had to, you know, compromise the screenplay because the dates didn't match. Yeah. So that was a big thing. And it, directing myself, uh, you know, I used to often say, it, I'm so not going to cast this actor again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, directing myself, I actually, in any movie that I've ever done, I never go see the monitor yeah. and all that. And I've never really had conversations with any director at length on the set. Yeah. It's always been a little bit, Are, zada ho gaya, kam ho gaya, what's for lunch, yeah. kya ho ra, kya ho ra. <laughs> because I've already done that with the directors, yeah. whatever yeah. discussions, arguments, putting your point across and all that has so already all happened. Prepped. Yeah. It's already yeah. happened. Yeah. Here, yeah. the director's got too many things to do. But I have, and, and I, but I, but I must say this, that I have an immense newfound respect for all the directors that I've ever worked <laughs> with because it's a tough job. No, no. I, when I became a manager, I, I had respect for all my managers. <laughs> I actually, I understood why they said what they yeah. said. But um, being, playing himself, uh, him, what did you learn most, you would say, about human spirit? And what have you tried to highlight about him the most through the movie? It's Sam Dam Dandabhed, which I have used to get this movie to be releasing now. Yeah. Uh, one should do whatever it takes one, once one has decided the purpose of their life. And that's what he did. Hmm. And also that Dushman ko kiye huye vade nibhai nahi jate. True. So, and of course, I started writing. Yeah. 
I started writing. I wanted to copy his handwriting hmm. just for myself. Hmm. And I started writing and I started, uh, I have written some 20 short stories like, oh, lovely. like for a collection of short, short stories. So that's going to be next? Uh, yeah, probably that's <laughs> going to be my next project. I have to just, you know, rewrite them a little and, you know, go over them and then I'm going to uh, probably see if any publication house wants to print them. Yeah. But when you were shooting the parts about Kalapani, uh, I mean... It is uh, atrocious living there. And what feelings did you have about someone who has done that? And what can people learn from him, his stay at Kalapani? I went there for the recce. See, mm. I written, we've, we had written the whole sequences in Kalapani. Yeah. But, and we'd seen pictures. Yeah. But we'd never been there. Yeah. When I went there for a recce, I was like, hey, how am I going to put this scene there? I've written it like this, but geography is different. So I was very much like that. And I was thinking of how to shoot a cell because it's 7 by 11. I didn't want to make a set of it. Yeah. And it was very difficult to shoot it. And, and the cameras have to go in and all that. And yeah. So I was figuring that out. And then all of a sudden I thought, hey, I'm playing Savarkar as well. So I told the team, I said, okay, guys, here's my phone. Just leave me here for some time. I want to... I want to feel what it's like to be in the cell. So they locked me from outside and went. Oh. And five minutes later, I, 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 I was breathless and I felt very uncomfortable. My chest started, you know, feeling funny. And what it must have been, no sanitation, no air. Yeah. You can't see anybody because all the cells face the same way. Yeah. I was screaming at them to come and get me out. They couldn't hear me. Those few moments of that flutter that I felt of what a soul must have gone through is what I then put as my bottom line to mm. execute my, the Kalapani portions. And um, it was absolute uh, uh, torture of food, sanitation, manual labor and abuse, conversions, hangings. He had a cell right above the hanging uh, place oh. so that he could see people see hanging mm. every time. So, it, he, and a lot of people wrote. He himself wrote for a lot of people the bail pleas. And they all got out. Just him and his brother were not let out. When people say, oh, he wrote mercy petition, he was a student of the British. Why was he in captivity for 27 years then? Yeah. If he yeah. Liked, they liked him so much. <laughs> yeah. Because in today's terms, he would be the greatest influencer. Yeah. In social medias, every second post would be memes and reels about him. He was so volatile, Yeah. you know, in his thoughts. I saw the trailer where that guy says that he almost convinced me that yeah, we are wrong. He had a great <laughs> convincing power yeah. over people. Yeah. And he did it with quite a fervor. And he did that since he was a child. Yeah. He started recruiting people, little kids, to kill the British when he was a little child. Yeah. In his Abhinav Bharat and Mitra Mela, he started yeah. first. Yeah. So he had this whole thing of, he read about secret societies of Europe. He read about books about Gerbaldi and Mazzini, who had gone in exile and then united Italy f in different provinces and then caused a revolution, became free. He was very influenced by that. Yeah. And the first... Uh, decade of the 1900s, it was a time of secret societies sending weapons, guns back to India, meeting Lenin and getting bomb manuals and, and you know, writing letters of, yeah. of mutiny to the soldiers and yeah. cooperation from the princely states and all the secret societies of Bengal, Punjab, Bombay province, Madras, they were all communicating amongst each other. It was going to be a movement that they were going to overthrow the British. Yeah. And he had written a book in 1907, I think, 1907 or 8 or something like that, which was like we've read in school. 1857, hmm. Sipoy Mutiny. Yeah. He rewrote it with another point of view, 1857, the first war of Indian independence. And that book that influenced people, it was banned before it was released. Wow. It was printed in Copenhagen. Yeah. And then it was sent to India and it was widely distributed. Wow. And, um, but nobody supported them. Yeah. Nobody supported the army. Congress was a liaison body formed between the British educated Indians and the imperialists and it was formed by a, call, a man called H. A. A. O. Hume. Yeah. They did not want this 
they and by the, Tilak wanted this. Yeah. Tilak ji wanted this. He was a hardliner, but he was also sentenced to Mandalay. They always send these uh, <laughs> violent people or violent bent of mind people outside India. Yeah. Kalapani, Mandalay, Yemen. Yeah. And it again became a, a moderate Congress, which did not support the the armed revolution at all, calling them cowards and and you know all that uh, for the longest time. And then of course our whole movement turned to non-violence, which I am not bagging by the way. Yeah. I I am I admire Gandhi ji more today that I have read Savarkar about Savarkar ji and Gandhi ji. I admire him more today because I was also misinformed about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Like the WhatsApp University <laughs> yeah. misinformed about yeah. Vinayak Savarkar. I was inform misinformed about M.K. Gandhi as well. But he was also a great man and he united the country in a great way. But that was a slow process, a process of little victories, whereas Savarkar felt that we there's this much handful of British. Yeah. We're going to kill them and scare the hell out of our country. Yeah, yeah. That's the only difference, difference between, between the two. In the end, they were both asking for the same thing, same which thing. is United India. Yeah. Just last question. You said that you made the movie for young people. <coughs> also, you said that you made the movie so that people can decide if he was Veer or not. Yes. Uh, so, what do you... I mean, if, if you just had to say, what do you want them to take away when they leave the movie halls? That there is... There is a bias in retelling in the telling of our history uh, because of the dispensation of that time the documentation has been very one-sided uh, detailed more than the other uh, one you will feel you will get engaged entertained and you will have you will learn more things about our freedom struggle than what is available on the first look at history Great. Thank you. Best thank of luck. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.